Mildred Vera Peters was born on a dairy farm north of Toronto in 1911, one of seven children. Her determination and curiosity drove her to graduate high school early. The academic and personal pursuits that my mother had can be traced back to her uh, family and her family life. Emphasis on academics for women, which was not common in that era. There was a, a good role model for my mother in both her mother and her older sisters. And in the 1920s, when very few women had the opportunity to pursue a professional career, she entered medical school. This began her unlikely journey to ultimate worldwide acclaim as an innovative researcher and compassionate physician. She was so gentle with patients, even if she was in a hurry, she would be gentle and give the individual patient all the time they needed. In 1936, while Vera was in residency, her mother was being treated for breast cancer by Dr. Gordon Richards, the father of radiation therapy in Canada. Dr. Richards, seeing Vera's determination to find out all she could about the disease, encouraged her to study it more intensively. She was not afraid to break new grounds and pioneer. She's an example of someone who can say, well, I think about this differently, and it's okay to think differently, because sometimes you hit on something magically important. Dr. Peters would go on to conduct and publish studies that would revolutionize the treatment of breast cancer and Hodgkin's disease. In an era where, for example, breast cancer was uh, usually treated with mastectomy, she pioneered breast preservation. She didn't only contribute around conservative management of breast cancer, she was a leading light in the treatment of Hodgkin's disease and lymphomas. Hodgkin's was considered to be incurable. Uh, patients weren't sent to specialists for treatment because they had Hodgkin's. This was a disease they were going to, uh, they were going to die. Her work clearly showed that Hodgkin's could be cured if treated appropriately in the early stages of the disease. So the impact was enormous. She would also pursue a new treatment strategy that was a precursor to the now commonplace patient-centered care. Vera Peters was a very caring physician. She put the patient first. She listened to patients very carefully. Patients absolutely adored her. She was always very interested in her patients and uh, went beyond knowing just what their clinical problems were. She was always interested in their social background. And she valued the patient's input. She would attempt to integrate to the treatment plan, the patient's point of view, and help them in the decision-making process. It was also that when you left the patient's room after that beautiful treatment and respect for the patient, you also then had a conversation with her where she brought out those teaching points around the patient and also her unique ability to approach that patient as an individual within the context of other data that she knew. Dr. Peters had an incredible ability to balance her professional life with her private life. And she got up in the morning at home and they had breakfast, she was Mrs. Lobb. She got in the car, drove to the hospital, she was Dr. Peters. And this allowed us a great deal of latitude in knowing who was calling. If they referred to her as Dr. Peters, we knew it was a professional call. If they referred to her as Mrs. Lobb, we knew that it was a family-based call. You leave a legacy that other people pick up, and perhaps that legacy isn't always one that fully acknowledges the contribution of the people in whose footsteps you trod. She left footprints in the snow and in the leaves and for people to stand in and move forward. This honor on behalf of the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame is really something she would be so thrilled about receiving. A remarkable role model, a superior researcher, an intuitive, compassionate, pioneering physician. Ladies and gentlemen, Canadian Medical Hall of Fame laureate, Dr. Vera Peters.